Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Stephanie and today I am showing you how I painted this Kasari Night Guard. This is going to be the very first of several videos in my Curse City painting series. So if you enjoy this video, then please go ahead and subscribe so you can see the rest of them that will be coming out over the next few weeks. And one other thing is that I did not include how I made the base for this mini. So if you're watching in hopes to make my the base kind of like mine, um, that will not be included in the video. This is just how I painted the actual model. So <laughs> thank you guys and let's get started. All right, so I went ahead and primed him gray. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is go in with whole red and pick out all of the areas of his skin that are broken. Any deep, dark, scabby red will work just fine for this. Next, I'm taking cork brown and necrotic flesh and mixing them in a 50-50 mix and applying that all over his skin. Make sure to water down your paint so you don't lose details and apply a couple coats. After that, I'm just going to use a Thonian camo shade and give him a pretty heavy wash. I found it looks better if you do two light washes rather than one super, super thick one actually because then you can control where it goes better. So. Yeah, I'm going over with just necrotic flesh after this and going over all of the high parts just to restore some of that color and give him a little definition. Um, when you're doing this kind of layering, you really want your paint to be watered down, but you don't want a ton of water in your brush. So what I do is I water down my paint and then I fully dry my brush or even grab another brush and then I go ahead and use the watered paint with the dry brush, if that makes sense. Next, I'm going to do his eyes so one of his eyes is going to be normal I'm just going in with white and then gonna put a black dot in the center for the other one I decided I want it to be kind of like an empty socket type of creepy look so I um, went in with whole red again on the other eye and then after that I went in with dark tone to kind of make the area a little shadowy and yucky looking Next, I am just taking this bright yellow color and I am going to pick out all of his teeth. After this step, I go over the whole mouth area with Skeleton Horde contrast paint just to make the whole area look kind of rotten and yucky. Alright, so I have this dark stone color. Any dark grayish brown will do. I'm going to paint his helmet. Um, I did take off the front part of his little furry tuft thing that he had in the front just to make painting his face easier. So yeah, I just base coated it with that color and then I'm going to paint this spike on top a lighter shade of gray so that it stands out more. Finally, I'm going to dry brush very lightly with gunmetal and then go over even lighter after that with any bronze color. Next up is all of the fur around his head, so I'm taking chocolate brown, I'm painting the top half of it that color, and then I'm going in with a warmer, almost orange brown for the lower half. I thought if it was two-toned, it would be a little bit more interesting to look at. After this step, I'm mixing skeleton bone and monster brown, and I'm taking that mixture, putting it on a makeup brush, and blotting this color onto the top parts of the fur. And then after that, I am going in with a brush and cleaning up some of those areas that may have a little bit of spongy texture that was left behind. Then I'm going in with just skeleton bone and I am picking out all of the high parts. We're going to move on to the pauldron. So I have a light gray color. I think it was uniform gray. I am base coating it, hitting it with some Nulm oil, and then I am going to do a little bit of edge highlighting. The edge highlighting might look a little out of place at first, but after the next step following this, it will blend in a lot better. I'm taking a dark metallic color and just very gently dry brushing this. I don't want to cover up too much of the pigment, but I do want to get some metal pigment on there. Following this, I'm taking my rust effects and a little stubby brush that I don't really care about and just placing that into the recesses. 
Next, I'm doing all the areas that will be black leather, base coating them in black, and then after they are base coated, I'm going to be doing some weathering on them, so I'm taking Uniform Gray and just gently dry brushing this on. After I dry brush the Uniform Gray on, I do go in with an even lighter gray and do a little bit more blotting on top of that. And then, plot twist, I actually completely changed this at the end of the video, so wait until the end before, if you want to do it like me, just don't, just, just, just hold on, just hold on. <laughs> All I'm doing here is adding a little bit of weathering, um, just little lines up and down, any ridges or areas I think that would have extra wear and tear on them. I am now going to use this contrast paint Wildwood, which is a very, very dark, pretty brown. And I'm putting that all over the pants, including the areas through the coat that you can see. And then I'm going in with Gal Vorbeck Red, and I am base coating the coat. This doesn't have the best coverage. It did take a couple coats before I got it how I wanted it, but I did finally get there. And I am using Corn Red to paint all of the areas besides the deepest recesses. At this point, I start mixing this color, which is called Red Leather, mixing that with the Corn Red and slowly start layering up from here. So with each coat, I stay within the previous layer, covering a little bit less surface area and adding a little bit of that lighter color. Eventually, I worked up to where I was just using red leather by itself on the very tippy tip tips of the coat. Next, I felt really compelled for some reason to paint his belt buckle, so I'm going in with Necromancer Cloak. Any dark gray will do. And then after I have base coated it, I'm going in with this, um, this sponge and just adding a little bit of metal pigment. Then I'm using this kind of turquoise -y teal color. Um, it's a technical paint. It's meant to look like the metal has started oxidizing. So I just put that on there. I figured it'd be a good time to test it out. I had never used it before. I ended up liking it. And then I'm applying more metal pigment along the edges of that to kind of bring it out again. Finally, it's time to work on the beard. I used ash gray. Any light gray will be fine. And after I base coat it, I hit it with some Nuln oil. And then after I finish that, I go over some of the tips and the center part of it with an even lighter gray. I'm going in with khaki and I'm going to be painting all of the little straps on his coat. After that, I'm going in with Screaming Skull, which is just a couple shades lighter than khaki. I'm going to be running this along the upper edge and then I also put some of this in the center, which is the high point of the strap. I'm doing a couple things with this bronze color, so I'm putting it on all of the little fastenings on these straps, and then I think I cut this part out, but I did also paint one of the keys on his hook thing, and then I go in with this contrast paint skeleton horde again, and I started with just covering the brass part, but the more I used it, the more I realized, oh, I can put this all over the key, the whole entire strap, everything. Just, I throw this contrast paint on everything. It looks so good, I love it so much. Next, I have this medium silver color. I am just going to use a dry brush to put the slightest little bit of metal pigment on the key hook. Why do I keep saying key hook? Key ring, it's called a key ring. 
And then I'm taking Skeleton Horde again, and I'm just going over his nails to bring a little bit more attention to them. Moving on to the weapon, I have a medium gray and a super, super light gray. And I'm going to do a bit of a wet blend along the inner half of his weapon. So I'm just moving from one color to the next, and then I'm taking a little bit of water on my brush, and I'm using that water to kind of muddle the line between the transition, and I just keep going lighter and lighter and lighter. Once I finish doing this on the inner part, I go ahead and do it on the outer part in the opposite direction. So on this side, the dark part is on the top, and then the light part is on the bottom. On the outside, the light part will be at the top, and the dark part will be on the bottom. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. Okay, so that's what it looks like when it's done. And then, surprise, I'm going over the whole thing with Skeleton Horde again. So um, I'm mixing it with a little bit of the contrast medium. I didn't want to lose the blend that I did, so I wanted to keep the contrast paint light. But I am just coating the whole blade with that, and this is what it looks like. Next, I am taking gunmetal and very carefully and lightly dry brushing the tips of the weapon. I didn't want to lose all the blending I did underneath, but I did want to give it a kind of metallic sheen. Alright, so then I am going to take straight up gunmetal, which is just a medium silver color. I'm putting it on this little part that attaches the blade to the handle. And then after I do that, I'm going with the contrast paint Gillum and Flesh, and I am covering the silver, which gives it a nice rusty look. For the handle, I kept it simple. I went in with chocolate brown, painted the damn thing, and then I washed it with some known oil. So this is where I decided I couldn't bear to look at the leather parts anymore. And I took this contrast paint, the Silicanum Gray, and I covered all the uh, weathering I had done. I This was experimental, I was nervous to do this, but after finishing I realized, oh this is great because all of the texture I put on there is still there, it's just muted a little bit and I think it left it with a more realistic finish. Next, for our little friend on the base, I'm going in with Uniform Gray, base coating, and then I'm taking this salmon color, I'm applying that to the tail, and then I go over the whole thing with strong tone just to make it look a little bit more mucky. And then in typical fashion, I have to add an eyeball onto it no matter how small something is. I have this complex where I have to paint an eyeball on it. So I went ahead and painted an eyeball on it. All right, guys, this is the final look. We are done. I went ahead and did the base and popped them on. And I'm super happy with how he came out. If you haven't already, please follow me on Instagram. Bye!